it really is an honor uh, to be at my alma mater and be in this community. Um, uh, I'll just give you a short brief. Some of you know me, some of you may not. So uh, graduated from Alva, went to, to Northwestern, I'm a ranger. Had a playing career up here, <clears throat> uh, played for Garen Higgins. Left from Northwestern, went to Northeastern and coached for Garen Higgins. Then went to Emporia State, where Coach Higgins still is. I coached there for a year. I left there, went to Kingfisher. I uh, was there for five years under Jeff Myers, who is an Alva native and a Northwestern Ranger. Um, left there, went to El Reno, where I was the head coach and AD for a year, and came back to Alva. Um, <clears throat> and to tell you how excited I am to take over this program and how uh, the vision and, and the things that I see that we can do as a community, I, I really can't put into words because I've been to other places. Uh, I've been to places that have success. <clears throat> I was part of that in college. Um, Kingfisher went to three state title games. There's a certain aspect of things it takes to be successful, really in anything you do. I mean, you all know that your business owners, workplaces, wh whatever you do in life, there's a certain way to do things. And we have that here already. It just needs to be applied to that structure. So that's what excites me is growing up here and knowing that it can be done and, and, and being part of that, I, I'm, I'm just really excited. <clears throat> um, and, and I wouldn't have that structure if it wasn't for you all and everybody in this community that, that cares about things like that and wants to put time and effort into seeing kids succeed, not just in football, but in anything they do. I mean, they're, it's, it's obvious that Alva um, really does have a special community. So. Um, Lynn mentioned, you know, there's a lot of big things, a lot of changes. Um, I won't get too much into the facilities at this point because a lot of that um, is is not up in the air. It's going to happen, but but you'll in due time understand what I mean by that. But I can tell you that it is going to be tremendous. It will be a game changer for our athletic programs here. Um, it's a huge gift. It, it can't really put into words what it's going to do for us in our community. Um, the weights, some of you have, have seen me beating down your doors asking for donations for our weight program. <clears throat> uh, we, we had raised money, a certain amount of money. Um, as soon as I got the job, that's the first thing I did. I jumped on that. And, and a lot of even people in this room have donated towards that. Um, Share Trust then matched those funds. Um, graciously so we we were able to purchase um, a lot of equipment for what we call our summer pride program our summer pride program is going to start fourth graders boys and girls in June we'll start them the second week of June and we'll work them three days a week if you're in fourth grade to eighth grade you'll be three days a week all the way till August <clears throat> And you run it just like a camp, just like that, a normal camp. That's that's what it is. Um, it's all it's it's a seven to eight week program, depending on <clears throat> that last week of attendance. But um, that's where you start it. When when you get that attendance coming from fourth grade to eighth grade, and it's not just football. I don't want you to just think that's just football. It's for any kid that wants to come to our summer pride program. So that's that's where you develop. Um, Everything, mental toughness, strength, flexibility, speed, uh, all the aspects of things that you would want to see an athlete or just plain wellness and health uh, to that point. So this equipment's what we'll be using that for. And, and then obviously our high school kids, our boys and girls, we'll do them four days a week earlier in the morning and have them out of there before the kids come in. But <clears throat> um, a lot, of, like I said, a lot of y'all know me. I grew up on the farm. So when someone, you know, a parent comes to me and says, <clears throat> well, this is just too much work for these kids. I'm like, well, this isn't work. <laughs> like, go, go change a bearing on a disc when it's 120 degrees out and you've dropped the wrench down in the dirt and you've got grease on your hands and your face and this is not work. This is fun. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> that's, you know, <clears throat> I've only been gone from from Alva for 10 years, you know, been removed from the athletic side of it for a little longer than that, you know, 15 or so from competing. But um, I do see a big difference in kids today. And it's not their fault, 
<clears throat> um, it's just our the way we are. We're we, we're a one it now generation. Um, we want everything handed to us quickly, as fast as we can. Um, and and you can't blame them because I can pull out my phone and Google about anything and have it in my hand pretty quick. It used to be, I mean, when I was a kid, we had cell phones, but they you got to play Snake on them and they were about that big and the Nokia tune and that was it. You used to have to go work to find information. I mean, you just go ask someone or go to a library or do something. Now it's everything's handed to them. So that being said, it is a challenge to get kids today to want to work and to see the benefit of working. Um, and that's really where we're at right now in the program is, is everybody says, well, hey, we're so excited that, that you're back and you've got things going. And, and how many games are you going to win? <laughs> Uh, I have no idea how many games we'll win. Well, why, why not? Well, what offense are we running? We're, we're going to run the, the offense that scores points. Oh, okay. Well, what, what defense are we running? A 3-4, three, 4-3. Four, four, three. So we're going to run a defense where we tackle people. <laughs> so that's where I'm at because we've got to teach these kids how to work and how to practice before we ever worry about what scheme were where we run an inside zone out of ace or we run in a three four and we bring the blitz from the boundary i'm not worried about any of that right now i'm worried about teaching these kids how to have a work ethic and some character and when we get to that point then we'll be all right but 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 this summer pride program i think which is what lynn was originally asked me to talk about is a big part of that um, there's you have to be accountable you know kids are gonna have to get get out of bed at, at 6 45 in the morning four days a week in the summer when you tell them that, they they just look at you like you're insane. What? What? Wait, I didn't hear you right. What? 6.45 in the morning in the summer. Coach, it's the summer. I know it's the summer, guys, but you've got to sacrifice if you want to be successful. Nothing in the in the world is gained without, without sacrifice. It's worth the day. So uh, we're going to get to that point. It's going to take a little bit of time to turn that culture around, uh, but I've already got... I've seen in the last three months, seventh and eighth graders that are trickling into our weight room, our small little weight room that we had that uh, my dad used in 1974 that we still have in there. They, they're trickling into there and we're, and we're moving things around in there. We're, we're teaching them we're, they're, and they are showing up. We're not requiring them to come. They've just seen what's been happening over the last few months and they want to be part of it. So that's encouraging and, and I'm excited about that. Um, you know, getting to play on this facility up here. By the way, I'm, I am going to clear that up. I've gotten 157 text messages over the last two months. Alpha's not going to get to play on Northwestern's field? What? No, I don't know who started that rumor. No, we, yes, we get to play on Northwestern's field. So um, it's been that way for 50 years, and I'm sure it will be that way for a long time. We have such a good relationship with the college, and they take care of us, and we try to help them any, any chance we get. And yes, we are playing on that new facility, and, and we our kids are just um, elated. I mean, they are elated to get to go up there and play and be part of that. Um, so <clears throat> I, I don't know if that if I gave you enough information or. or Can you talk about the gift from the uh, glasses? The yeah, I'll, I'll hit on that just a little bit. Um, like I said, that's one of the things that's really not done yet. And so I don't want anything to be in, in stone and concrete. And I want um, Greg to be able to tell you about that. That's okay. Yeah. And, and it's real. There's really a lot more to it. And that's that's why I want to uh, uh, let him elaborate on. It. But I can tell you that is going to be uh, I believe the paper report $100,000. Okay, it's going to be well over that. Well, 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 well over that. Uh, by the time it's built. Uh, the facility uh, is going to be premier in northwest Oklahoma. I'll just put it that way. Um, from the facilities that we went and looked at and the ideas that we had put together and what uh, Mr. Glass wants to do, um, I, I will let him be the one that tells you that when that day comes you need to have him here and let him explain it to you uh, because he is, you know, and others that are going to be involved in it. I really do think there will be some others that, that, that come in and, and get involved with that as well. but. Um, Yes, sir. What about the, you know, there's a new regulation on, uh, <clears throat> on practice and uh, hitting and uh, full contact, I guess. Uh, is that going to affect anything? I mean, is that you pro or against it? it you know, I, okay. Well, 
it's not going to affect us, okay? Because what, what they're trying to do, and it's never going to get passed the way that they wanted it to get passed. What they're saying is they're trying to come in there and say you can only have X amount of minutes of contact per day, per week. Um, and they've already put restrictions on, you know, like some of you all in here that played football back in your day, you had two a days or three a days. You, know, you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you go to practice. You go eat lunch, you come back and practice, you go eat supper, you come back and do conditioning. Well, I know we did that in college, but now that, that, that doesn't exist anymore. Those days are gone. There is no two days. I mean, you can, you can practice in the morning and do conditioning in the evening, but you can't, there's a, there's a limit on how much you can actually practice. So that will not affect us because I don't think it's actually going to be um, – encompassed in what we're doing so much is what they think it is they're going to you know if they say there's 90 minutes of actual contact well then our question was well a football play only lasts seven seconds that's a lot of practice time right they're not they're not in contact during instruction which is what most of a practice is a lot of teaching so I don't think that that will be as big a deal as, the, as people are making out to be. Now, I, do I believe in limiting some contact for injury? I, yeah, I do. We're not going to go out there every day and, and try to get after each other at 100% at speed. That's just not wise to do, especially with, with kids. So, <clears throat> we yes, we do limit that uh, to an extent. But at the same time, um, if you're not preparing your kids for that physicality, then I believe that's almost negligence. You know, because to tell a kid he's not going to get hit in, in a football game and, and not prepare him for that, and how to take a hit and how to hit the right way, there's a there's a right way to do it to prevent injury. Um, so yeah, we, we have to practice at that. Does that answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So who is the they you mentioned that makes these restrictions? Oh, uh, it would be like the National Federation uh, of which we fall under. Uh, like if we're in Texas, the NC they go on NCAA rules. So uh, we're a little bit different, not not a lot, but a little bit. So the National Federation of High School uh, that encompasses what we cover. So by they, it's a bunch of people that I don't know if they ever played football or what they do, or it's a lot like everything else in life. People that make decisions for us that don't even know who we are or what we do, pretty much. <clears throat> Not not on what we're playing on. No, you can you can use anything on these. Um, they say maybe a quarter of an inch thicker, uh, longer. So if you had a <clears throat> three quarter of an inch, you might go to an inch. But I don't see that being a problem at all. Um, our kids. Um, when I was at Kingfisher, we played on turf a couple times a year, and we never never used different cleats and got along just fine. So no, we, we won't need any any special kind of shoe other than what we've had. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about maybe staff. And numbers of students yes. you think you'll have out Absolutely. you're projecting? Um, I, had, I was going to bring my defensive coordinator today, but we are in state testing, and I'm guessing that he got caught up uh, today. But his name is Mike Schlar. Um, some of you all might recognize that name. He's kind of familiar to this area. <clears throat> he was a defense coordinator in Perryton, Texas. Um, and so he's here in Alva. His family, he married a Nusser. Um, so he's got ties to this area. Um, Ryan Wilson, who's a good young coach that we hired this year, he will be back for us. He's from Tulsa. Um, Derek Thomas, of course, you all know Derek, great guy. We're lucky to have him. Um, he does youth ministry at the Baptist Church. Also, he is the spring, so um, he uh, he's he's great with the kids. Uh, got a good knowledge of the game. He'll be back with us. Um, I have a student assistant from Hennessy. He was a quarterback at Hennessy. Um, I kind of got to know him <clears throat> when I was coaching at Kingfisher because that's a big rivalry, and he was a good quarterback. They went to two state championships uh, while he was there. He's going to school at Northwestern. When I found out he was going to school up here, we, we snatched him up and put a whistle on him, and, and we're teaching him the ropes because he's a good kid and a lot of good knowledge with the game. Anytime you can get a guy up in a program like that, um, we won him, so he, he not playing football no, he, he tore his ACL, so he was done, uh, couldn't play anymore, so we took that opportunity to, to get a hold of him and, and, and use his skills. <clears throat> um, there is another, uh, we have an opening for staff, we're trying to get that hired right now, I do have someone in mind, he will be tremendous if we get that deal done, we're waiting to hear on his test results, um, if we get him hired, he'd be a huge asset to us. 
Um, as far as kids, uh, I filled out a deal today for our labor auction, which I'm going I'm to plug that right now. Next Friday night, <laughs> next Friday night at the Alva Golf Country Club, we're doing a labor auction for our kids. It starts at 7:30. We're serving a meal uh, with that, so we would love to have you out there and support the kids. Where there's other going to be other things to bid on there, old jerseys, helmets, um, but. I filled out the roster for that today, and there's, there was 55 kids on there. So um, that is almost up 20 from last fall. Is that a lot more on the younger end? Yes, that is a lot more. And, and you know, you, we have four or five kids that didn't come out that are junior and senior that are going to come out this year. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, we've seen a big, well, a huge increase in numbers already. Now, hopefully they'll stay there. Um, Back to what I said at the beginning, uh, it's, it's not going to be easy. I mean, we're not. Yeah, we'll see if 55 stick around. Uh, you know, I hope so. Uh, I told them if they're in Alva, now, you know, if they're in Alva, then they need to be there. You know, if you're on vacation with your family, if you're at Bible camp, if you're, you know, wherever you are, that's fine. I want you to spend time with your family. But if I have to go get a bus out of the bus barn and drive a route in the morning and start at 5 o'clock and start dragging people out of bed, I'll do it. You know, I said, don't make me come to your house and embarrass you. You know, so <laughs> get your mom out of bed at 6.30, she'd be mad at me. So, uh, but, but they really are. You know, we have great kids here. I mean, I'm telling you, we do. We have great kids, and that's reflected upon a great community. I've been to other places, and I'm telling you that we do have great kids. They're respectful. And they're willing to work if you're willing to push them. So what I'm saying before is we just have to get them to that point uh, to where they understand and expect success. Uh, and their expectations right now, they don't have any. They just went through a season and went 0-10. Uh, you know, that's – it's tough. It's tough. They've been beat down mentally and physically, so we, we've got to find a way to build them up. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, the first meeting at quarterback club last year, Coach Dollar says, well, guys, I'm going to tell you, we're slow, we're small, and we're young. I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe going to change a little bit. Going well, here. Uh, we're going to get bigger. <laughs> yeah, we, we have uh, – <laughs> yeah, 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 we're, we're, we're working on that. Um, mm -hmm. No, we. Alan never graduated high school. He got some older. He's a pretty big fella. He's older. I'm telling you, take it, take it. Um, no, we 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 are we are definitely. It, we've had the kids. Luckily, um, since November, we've had them in the weight room. So some of these kids have been through two separate um, uh, programs, basically an eight-week program and a six-week program. And so we've already seen an increase to some of 15 to 20 pounds. Um, I would say the average increase on strength wise uh, per lift that we've seen of the the core 28 to 30 kids that have been in this offseason program is already well over 20 pounds per lift. So our kids are already increasing strength. Um, it won't take long to get them to buy in. I mean they're they're close to it right now um, but it will take a while to catch up. And what I mean by that is if any of you all came and watched some games last year, um, we're just behind. I mean, we just are physically. Uh, we're behind, uh, and we'll get there. Our kids will get there. Um, we open up week one with the state champion of Class A. we got to go down to Thomas and play Thomas week one. Um, we go down to Hobart week three. If anybody knows anything about Hobart, they're a tradition-rich football program. We play Hennessy, Chisholm, OCS. We're all in the semifinals or quarterfinals this year, all on our schedule. So, um, I mean, it's it's not going to be easy, and our kids know that. Um, but um, we're excited. I mean, they're excited. It's a great opportunity for them. I mean, nobody expects anything from them outside of Alva. We know what we expect, but outside of this town, they, nobody's got them circled. They're just, I mean, so – we have a great opportunity to sneak up on some people and, and make a name for ourselves this year and then continue that on through the next couple. Yeah, I think you said a while ago, I'm confident you missed it. Your, how many people do you have coming out for football as compared to years past? Um, well, I, just the one year that I've seen here in the fall, we have, um, <clears throat> we have 50, over 50 right now. 
um, upwards about 55. And I don't know where that will stay, fluctuate up or down from there. Um, but that's including eighth graders coming up. So that that would be freshman next year. That number's including that. Is that about the same as the past? That no, that's about 20 kids more than we had last season. Um, typically at a 2A school, you're going to hover around 40 to 50 kids. Um, if you're a great program, hopefully you're upwards of 50. So hopefully we'll have good retention with those kids. And I, I really do think that it, numbers are just going to increase. I don't see that we'll ever be back down in the 30s. Um, uh, we'll say we'll see, but but uh, I really don't think so. Our, our, our is that great kids. two A three A deal? Uh, it seems like we're kind of on the borderline. We move back and forth. I guess we're there for a couple of years at a time. Well, it's something. it's very confusing um, for someone that hasn't seen that side of it. <clears throat> what happens is three A. Um, well, I'll put it this way: basketball and baseball are paired <laughs> differently than football. Okay, so Alva has say two hundred and sixty kids at the high school. Well, the limit for 3A basketball is different because there's a lot of schools in Oklahoma that don't play football, right? We have a lot of smaller schools that they play fall baseball. So those, those schools do play basketball, though. So we have more basketball playing schools in the state of Oklahoma than we do football. So that number, we're 260. We're in the middle. In, in 2A, we're in the middle. We're not going to 3A anytime soon. In It'll football. Be in football. In football. In football. But whereas that number sits on uh, basketball, we're up the list because of all the schools that are playing below us that don't play football. It fluctuates that list. So yes, to answer your question, we, we may go back up to 3A in basketball and baseball next year, but not in football. We, we'll be 2A in football for the f foreseeable future. Yes? This time next year, how many seniors are we going to be losing? How many are we going to be losing? Yeah. Um, probably eight or nine. Uh, like I said, there's now we finished the season with uh, juniors, I think eight, but we have a couple, like I said, that are going to come back out. So we are we are young. We are a young ball team. Um, we're going to have a few seniors starting for us in spots, but uh, the team that you see this year, the vast majority of them will be back again the next year. Um, so it it's. It's going to be a little shaky at first, but um, but a lot of that is lack of experience. You know, we haven't had a lot of JV games, haven't had a lot of those uh, played in the past. Um, I just finished the JV schedule this morning. We have um, <clears throat> seven full JV games scheduled next year. We have two freshman games, something we've never had here, um, just for them to play. Uh, so that's those are things that are happening, trying, trying to get experience and, and things along that nature. Who are the JVs against? Um, we uh, play Chisholm, Hennessy, Tonkawa, Enid, um, Chaparral, um, Moreland. Varsity? What's that? You're talking about junior varsity. Junior varsity, yeah. Be a mix of mix of ninth grade and tenth grade, and a few juniors in there that don't play on Friday nights. Yeah. So, just trying to get as many games in as we can, and the problem is. Sometimes you, you know, we, we may be able to play that game. Uh, but when you're talking about small school football, you know, if that game's supposed to be played on Monday night. You call the coach at Chaparral and say, hey, are we good to go tonight? And he says, coach, I lost two kids Friday night to injury. I got to move two more up. I don't even have enough to play a JV game. And that will happen. That, that just will happen. I can just guarantee you at some point in the season that will happen. So that's why you try to schedule as many as you can because you, you're going to have some – that you'll lose to that. Our time's pretty well up. Okay. Thank you so much, Taylor. Thank you for having me.